hundred and sorry, Psalm ninety, Psalm ninety, Psalm nine zero. We're not going through Daniel, we're going through Psalm ninety tonight. We're going to look at Psalm 90. Let's uh, read the entire psalm responsively. Okay, I'm going to read verse 1. You, you please read verse 2. We'll read through the entire psalm. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought down, ever Thou dost turn man back into dust, and thou dost say, Return, O children of men. Thou hast swept them away like a flood, they fell asleep. In the morning they are like grass which sprouts anew. Verse 7, for we have been consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we have been dismayed. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days have declined in thy fury, we have finished our years like a sigh. Verse 11, who understands the power of thine anger and thy fury according to the fear that is due thee? Verse 13, do return, O Lord, how long will it be? And be merciful for thy servants. Make us glad according to the days thou hast afflicted us, and the years we have seen evil. And let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and do establish for us the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Okay, let us pray. Our gracious God, our Heavenly Father, this uh, evening, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is eternal. Your word is not time bound. Uh, it speaks to us today. Yes, Lord, as we look into your word this evening, we pray, O oh God, that you would speak to us. You would uh, give us a heart of wisdom, give us a heart that would have the same desire that Moses had. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless the word in our hearing. Father, this evening I commit myself to you. I pray that you would uh, help me, Lord, as I speak your truth. Father, please uh, bless this time. Please give me the wisdom needed to speak your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. So you're all aware I'm sick, so you're going to have accidents today. So, so be ready for the accidents. I have a napkin roll here, so I'm going to put it here. Well, I was thinking what should I preach on? Um, since we are in a transitory phase in our lives, I decided it would be fitting that we should speak on something that uh, meets our immediate needs and so I'm going to bring forth Psalm 90 before us. Psalm 90, most of your Bibles would say at the beginning 
Psalm 90 is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Psalm 90 is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. As you read through the entire psalm, you would find that he is always using a plural word. A plural word is used to designate the prayer. If you read, for example, verse 17, he says, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. He doesn't say, Let the favor of the Lord be upon me. Right? Verse 7, We have been consumed by thine anger. Verse 16, Let thy servant appear Sorry, let thy work appear to thy servants. Right? So obviously Moses, as he's offering this prayer, is representing a group of people. If it is just himself praying, it would be in he it would be directed from his heart. Uh, and he, most of the sentences would be around himself, but it is offered on group on behalf of a group of people. Obviously, he is representing the children of Israel. The psalm is written, as you look through the text in this particular psalm, the psalm is written when God's people were experiencing God's wrath, God's anger. Verse 7, we have been consumed by thine anger, by thy wrath we have been dis dismayed thou has placed our iniquities before thee <laughs> the context of this psalm is that moses and the children of israel are about to enter the promised land moses had brought the children of God out of Egypt. We read in Exodus chapter 14, 15, 16, the children of God, the people who came out of Egypt, instead of trusting the promises of God, they have murmured against God. They did not trust the faithfulness of God. They did not trust the truthfulness of God. And God was not happy with them. God was, because of their unbelief, the wrath of the Lord arose against them. And when God's wrath arose against them, God had expressed His anger. You read uh, Numbers 14, you'll, you'll read the verses. God says, all those who are about 20 who came out of Egypt, they shall be slain in the wilderness. They shall not enter the promised land except Caleb. I will show my anger, I will show my wrath for unbelief, for not trusting in my word. And so Moses, as he led the children of Israel, he would see the expression of this wrath against uh, the generation that came out of Egypt. Commentators think roughly around 15,000 people were dying in the camp. God's um, anger expressed. And against that background, this prayer comes to the forefront. That's the context of this prayer. God's people perishing under God's wrath because they have not trusted His word. And so out of this adversity arises this prayer. Not only there is adversity, but there is this hope. There is a new generation. There is this transitory phase. The old generation has passed away. There is this new generation. 
And so this new generation was about to enter the promised land. Moses himself was in his last days. And Moses, representing this new generation that was entered, going to enter the promised land, offers this prayer on behalf of the new generation that would enter the promised land. There is this transitory phase and Moses amidst this transition is depending on God, is looking to God, is hoping in God, is putting his expectation in God and offering this prayer. I thought we also are going, going through a transitory phase. We are ending 2018, we are going to enter 2019. And whatever Moses lays as a template here is applicable to us as well. As we are entering a new transit, uh, as we are entering a transitory phase, as we are entering 2019, whatever Moses prays for, my desire is that we also would pray for those things. Whatever Moses sets before us through this psalm, we also would be blessed if we offer this prayer. We read in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, that God answers his prayer. The people, the new generation, were a faithful people under Joshua. We read that in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Moses offered the prayer in sincerity, in truth. God heard his prayer. God blessed the generation that Moses was representing. For us also, this evening, as we take these prayer requests for ourselves, and if we offer them in sincerity, in truth, in brokenness, in repentance, God would surely hear us. God would surely bless us. And that, that's why I'm, I'm taking up this psalm. I'm trying, I'm trying to simplify the psalm, and I'm going to give you four headings. Four points, if you will. Four head, headings. And if you don't hear, if you don't get anything, just get the four headings. And may that be your prayer, my prayer, sincerely. The first heading is this. Be thou our dwelling place, O God. Be thou our dwelling place. We hear a song called, Be thou our wisdom. The second heading was 12, be thou our wisdom. Be thou our wisdom. First heading comes from verse 1, be thou our dwelling place. Be thou our wisdom, verse 12. Verse 14, be thou our mercy. Be merciful to us, O God. Let thy mercy satisfy us in the morning. Be thou our mercy. Number four. Verses 16 and 17. Be thou our blesser. Be thou our Blesser, Moses is saying, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Let the grace of our Lord, let the blessing of the Lord our God be upon us. Four things, right? Be thou our dwelling place. Verse 12, be thou our wisdom. Verse 14, be thou our mercy. Verse 17, be thou our blesser. <coughs> We're going to study this passage under these four headings. First verse says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Thou hast been our dwelling place 
in all generations. Again, remember the context. God's people under the expression of God's wrath for their unbelief are dying in the wilderness. There is calamity in the camp. There is pain in the camp. There is death in the camp. And amidst this trouble, amidst this pain in the camp, where does Moses go? Moses goes to God. Moses, children of Israel, go to God. Be the, the, and they express this confidence. They say, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Remember when God called Abraham, what was his dwelling place? We read in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews 11, verse 9. <coughs> Hebrews 11, 9. Hebrews 11, 9. <coughs> Hebrews 11, 9. By faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. We are told God called Abraham. God showed him. Go to the land that I'll show you. Abraham, we are told, did not build houses. Everywhere he went, he did one thing. The first thing he, he does after he goes to any place is he would build an altar and he would call upon the name of the Lord. An altar is a place where sacrifices are offered. An altar is a place where worship is possible. So Abraham, what does he do? Wherever he goes, the first thing is he, he puts his tent, he puts an altar. He's not worried about his permanent dwelling. Tent and an altar. He is dwelling in tents. He was looking forward for that city whose builder and architect is God. He knew his permanent home is heaven. In this world, he was making God his dwelling place. In Psalm 90, we are told, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. In Abraham's time, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. In Isaac's time, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. In Jacob's time, you have been our dwelling place. In the wilderness, Lord, you have given us instructions about the tabernacle and you dwelt amidst your people. Lord, in all generations thus far, starting from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the wilderness generation, you have been our dwelling place. We come to you in the midst of this crisis that is in the camp. Whom, whom can we go to? Thou art our dwelling place. Yeah. Lord, you are our dwelling place. Be our dwelling place. As we enter a new year, this must be our prayer. Lord, be thou our dwelling place. Lord, help me to dwell in you. Help me to abide in you. How can we uh, dwell and abide in the Lord? When we are in His Word. 
when we are in his word we abide in the lord when we abide in his truth we abide in the lord god fellowships with us god comes down to us let us turn to john chapter 14 verse 23 john chapter 14 verse 23 John chapter 14 verse 23 Jesus answered and said to him If anyone loves me he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him we will make our dwelling with him we will make our fellowship with him as we enter the new year this must be our prayer lord be thou our dwelling place lord help me to abide in your word help me to spend my life around your word help me to study your word help me to read your word help me to think of your word for i know when i think when i meditate when i around your word you 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 have fellowship with me lord be our dwelling place when you come on sundays this every sunday after sunday when you attend bible studies we have fellowship with one another that's important But more than that we have fellowship with our god he is meeting with us his dwelling place is here through his word so as moses expresses here may it be our desire that we are we realize that god is our dwelling place and may we pray lord be thou our dwelling place help us to abide in thy word as we move on our second prayer must be around be thou our wisdom be thou our wisdom james tells us in james chapter 3 we are told james chapter 3 verse 13 through 18 verse 13 he says there are two types of Uh, actually there is th- the wisdom that is of this world there is a wisdom of this world which is earthly uh, in verse 15 he says this wisdom is not that which comes down from above meaning from heaven but is earthly natural and demonic this such such a thing called demonic wisdom <coughs> worldly wisdom demonic wisdom it's useless it won't help us in any way it makes us enemies of god there is another wisdom verse 17 but the wisdom from above meaning from heaven the wisdom from heaven is first pure peaceable gentle reasonable full of mercy and good fruits there is a heavenly wisdom as believers we must seek this wisdom which is from above how do we get this wisdom the fear of the lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Please turn to Psalm 110. 100, I'm sorry, Psalm 111, verse 10. <coughs> Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. True wisdom from above comes as a result of the fear of the Lord. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. This is the wisdom Moses desires the children of Israel would have. This is the wisdom that we must desire to. And it is a consequence of the, because of the fear of the Lord. It is a consequence, it is an after effect because of the fear of the Lord. Without the fear of the Lord, you cannot have this wisdom. We all are uh, acquainted with this concept called cause and effect, right? If you want, if I want this heavenly wisdom, it must come because of the fear of the Lord. You take off the fear of the Lord and you desire wisdom, it becomes man-made religion. It becomes philosophy. It is not true wisdom. True wisdom is always a consequence of the fear of the Lord. Only from understanding the Lord, we can have true wisdom. And in this Psalm, Psalm 90, Psalm Psalm 90 we understand that an understanding of the nature of God is important to have fear of God and which results in true wisdom it is very important to understand the nature of God it is very important for us to reflect on the character of God only when we have God as the reference, God, His nature, His perfections, only then we will have true fear of the Lord and which will result in wisdom. Moses here, verse 2 says, he considers the eternity of God. In verses 5 through 7, he considers the transientness of man, the brevity of man. If we don't have the eternity of God as the baseline, as the standard, man becomes the measure of everything. But the minute we have God as the standard, we see how insignificant we are, how, how, how our lives are so full of brevity, how transient they are how small we are. Moses here reflects on the eternity of God. Before the mountains were born, or thou didst give birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Who can explain these words? No one. They are beyond our understanding. From everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. From eternity past to eternity future, Thou art God. Verses 3 to 6, when we compare this eternal God, when we compare ourselves against this eternal God. Our lives are not in our hands. 
Thou dost turn man back into dust, and thou and dost say, Return, O children of men. Our lives are in God's hands. Remember in garden what God told Adam and Eve? From dust you've come to dust you shall return. Our lives are so transient, are so short. Our lives are like a watch in the night. Our lives will be swept away like a flood. We are totally helpless. Our lives are compared to a flower that sprouts in the morning and in the evening it's gone. So insignificant we are. And soon this one life will go away very quickly and soon we will stand before this eternal God. Scripture continuously tells us he shall reward, he, uh, he shall recompense each man according to his work. We are accountable for our lives. Our life would be gone like this in a split second. Before we know it, it's gone. We'll stand before God. We're going to give an account. It is appointed unto man once to die and then judgment. We're going to give an account of our deeds. I don't know about you, but whenever there was an exam, I prepared well. I'm sure you're smart enough and if there is an exam, you would prepare well. <coughs> if you go to an exam without preparing well, you'd be considered a fool. God is going to examine us. God is going to examine us. When we understand the eternity of God, when we consider we are so temporary and we are going to stand before God, we get ready, we prepare for this exam before God. We apply ourselves, we know this is true and therefore we prepare ourselves. We, we, we get true wisdom. We apply this truth we get this true wisdom and prepare ourselves for that day. We keep the main thing, the main thing. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeit his own soul? We are concerned about the salvation of our souls. And so we prepare ourselves for the day of reckoning, for the day of judgment. We are going to stand before this eternal God. We repent of our sins and we get ready, we apply wisdom, we get ready for the day of judgment. See, you cannot have this wisdom unless you start with God, His nature, His character. The eternity of God, the temporariness of man, getting ready to meet God. This awareness leads us to wisdom. Be thou our wisdom. Not only that, when we think about God, we not only consider His eternity, we also consider His holiness. His perfectness, His righteousness. We consider Him as the judge of all the earth who cannot do wrong. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is right? We know this God. Nothing is hidden from His eyes. Verse 8. Thou hast placed our iniquities before Thee, our secret sins in the light of Thy presence. Everything is naked and bare before this holy God. Nothing can be hidden from His eyes. He is going to judge us. He is going to judge us for our sins. When we come to the realization that the judge of all the earth will do what is right, 
it leads us to repentance. It leads us to salvation in Christ Jesus. You don't start with God, you, ca you cannot get there. You must start with God. Not only do we see the eternity of God, not only do we see the holiness of God, we repent, we turn to God. We put our faith in Jesus our Lord. Verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may present to thee a heart of wisdom. We know our days are short. Our days are gone. So we live the life in this world not for ourselves but to please Him. We ask the Lord, Lord, give us wisdom. Apply thy word by thy spirit to my heart, that I may live according to thy will. Apply, help me to apply my heart unto wisdom. Only when we start with God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Can we get there? This evening, as we enter into a, a new year, let this be our prayer. Lord, renew my understanding about you, about your nature. From it comes reverence, from it comes fear. And that leads to wisdom. Lord, be thou my wisdom. Be thou our dwelling place. Be thou our wisdom. Moses obviously is teaching these truths to the children of Israel. He's teaching us this, this evening too, the same truths. Who are you? You are brevity. You are a sinner. This God is eternal. This God is holy. Apply your heart to wisdom. Get ready to meet Him. Ask Him for wisdom. By repenting and turning to the Lord and asking Him for wisdom, we can receive true wisdom. <clears throat> the third heading, Be Thou Our Mercy. Be thou our mercy. Be thou merciful to us. In verse 13. Do return, O Lord, how long will it be? And be merciful for thy servants. O satisfy us in the morning with thy mercy, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days thou hast afflicted us, and the years we have seen evil. Here are the children of God. They have experienced the wrath of God, the anger of God. They are experiencing the judgment of God. Moses is interceding and asking God, to be merciful. To be merciful. We have sinned against you, Lord. We have endured enough. But now, please be merciful. This is a new generation. Please be merciful. As we enter the new year, we understand we are fallen creatures. And this must be our prayer. Lord, please be merciful to me. Help me to guard my ways. Help me to walk in paths of righteousness. Please be merciful to me. In 
in Psalm 130, Psalm 130, verse 3. Psalm 130, verse 3. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? If thou should mark iniquities before thy perfectness, who can stand, O God? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. You are merciful, O God. You are full of forgiveness. And this is my hope. Be merciful to me. Verse 7. O Israel, O children of God, O Christian, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is abundant redemption. With him there is abundant forgiveness. He will redeem the children of God from all his iniquities. Lord, be merciful to us as we enter the new year. Lord, not because of our merit, but because of thy mercy. Lord, be merciful to us. Psalm 147 verse 11. The Lord favors those who fear him. The Lord is pleased with those who fear him. Those who wait for his mercy. We are fallen creatures. God's mercy alone is our hope. Self-righteousness, our own merit, gets us nowhere. And Moses is seeking the mercy of God, the kindness of God, the compassion of God. He says in verse 14, Oh, satisfy us in the morning with thy mercy. Oh, we all need the mercy of God. Satisfy us in the morning with thy mercy. You remember in the Old Testament, every morning, the children of Israel in the wilderness, manna would flow, would, would come out of heaven. This heavenly provision would come out of heaven. Moses, perhaps, visualizing that, let, like, let mercy come like that manna. Every morning, O God, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. The Lord is pleased with those who fear Him and who hope in His mercy. As we enter the new year, as Moses in intercedes for the, his generation, that God would be merciful to his generation. Notice that he's going, to, he's going to go in a few days, but he's asking God to be merciful to, his gen to the next generation. May we also ask God to be merciful to us and to our children. Be thou our dwelling place, be thou our wisdom, be thou our mercy, 16 and 17. Be thou our blesser. Moses here is praying for the children of Israel. They have a task. They have to occupy the promised land. They need God's favor. They need God's hand upon their lives. Joshua and his contemporaries need God's hand upon their lives. Verse 16. Let thy work appear to thy servants. Let thy work appear to thy servants. God, this is your work. This is not Joshua's work. This is not Joshua's contemporary's work. Let thy work, God, you have promised that you would give the promised land. 
to the children of Israel. You promised the forefathers. You promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Let thy work appear to thy servants. That work that you have promised. Let it be done. And thy majesty to their children. Majesty could be translated glory. Let thy glory appear to thy to their children. Moses is praying. Lord, please show your glory. Yes, this is a small group of people. No way they can take the land by themselves. But show your glory. Show your work. So that they may know that it is not their strength, but it is your strength that has accomplished the occupation of the promised land. 17. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Let your favor be upon us. <coughs> let your blessing, let your grace be upon us. And do confirm for us the work of our hands. Do, yes, establish the work of our hands. Lord, you must bless, you must establish this work that this generation has to take, to drive out the inhabitants of the land and to occupy the promised land. You must establish this work. Unless your blessing is there, we cannot do this work. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Moses was praying for his generation. And it applies to us too. Lord, establish the work of our hands. Lord, Show thy glory to our children. Show thy glory, show thy goodness, show thy work to our children. I'm speaking specifically for our children. This must be our prayer. Show thy glory, show thy goodness to our children. As we enter this new year, specific prayer for our children. <coughs> Verse 17, Lord, establish the work of our hands. It could be our office work. It could be the work of the Lord that we are part of. Scripture teaches us in 1 Corinthians 3, Scripture teaches us Verse 11, for no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds upon this, upon the foundation, uh, builds upon the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it, it will be revealed with fire. The fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. It seems all the work that we do, God is going to test our motives. Is it for the Lord's sake or is it for our own sake? Why do we serve the Lord? Is it for a name for ourselves or is it for a name for the Lord God? Why do we do things for God? Is it for our glory or it is for His glory? If it is for His glory, God will establish God will let us live, uh, leave a legacy. But if we are building for ourselves, the, all that work would be burned with fire. Lord, we don't want to do our will. Lord, we don't want to do my will. Lord, we want to do your will. Establish your work through us. Bless it with thy spirit. Be thou our blesser, 
upon all the things we do. Be thou our blesser. Be thou our blesser. Let thy the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us. As we enter a new year, Moses, as he's praying for his generation, for the new generation that would enter the promised land, these four requests are applicable to us as well. As we get ready for a new year, may it be our heart's desire that we would in sincerity and truth pour out our hearts before God and say, Lord, be thou our dwelling place. Lord, be thou our wisdom. Lord, be thou our mercy. Lord, be thou our blesser. Let us pray. Our gracious God, our Heavenly Father, this uh, evening, yes, Lord, it is because of Thy mercies we are not consumed. Yes, Lord, we do ask, Lord, that You would visit us in a special way as we prepare for a transitory phase in our lives, Father. You would help us, you would enable us to be your people, that we would live as aliens and strangers in this world, and you would be our dwelling place. Father, we pray that uh, you would give us a fresh revelation of yourself. Lord, we pray that we would measure everything, not by measure of man, but by your standard, by your nature, by your word. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us, Lord, to apply our hearts and to wisdom to live for you. Father, we pray that you would show mercy upon us. Lord, we are not worthy. Yes, Lord, the publican was right when he prayed, be merciful to me, a sinner. Yes, Lord, help us to hope in thy mercy. Lord, it is your mercy alone that we are not consumed and help us to hope in thy mercy. Father, we do ask that you would uh, bless the work of our hands, establish the work of our hands, help us to do with true motives, pure motives, to honor you, to glorify you. Lord, show thy glory, show thy goodness to our children. May they serve you, Lord. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Father, we commit ourselves to you. We ask for your blessing. Lord, bless us, Lord. We need thy blessing. We commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.